Dun 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 dun. This comic is awesome. Yep. Here's my review of the third issue of Son of Daphomir, which... Another great episode! I mean, I'm so bummed that the show was cancelled and we didn't get to see this arc, because it is great! Especially visually, like... Like, seriously, like, everything is great about this except the fact that I'm not seeing its intended meme. Like, these are... There's some great visuals, great shots, great action scenes, and... And it was clearly intended for animation, but let's just talk about what's great about this show, because it's great. Anyway, I'll touch up on that a bit at the end. Anyway, so this issue continues Maul's story. Maul has brought Dooku and Grievous to an asteroid base where he's telling Dooku to join him. Um, meanwhile, Palpatine sends the Jedi to capture Dooku and Maul and Grievous. Um, in the confusion, Grievous escapes, Dooku and Maul team up, and they escape. So while not much happened in this episode, again, it was probably a bit longer, a bit more dialogue, a bit more action, but it was still really good. First off, great manipulation on both sides. First off, we have Palpatine. Rather than going after D Maul and Grievous himself, Dooku and Grievous himself, he just sends the Jedi after him. I thought that was great manipulation. And then also Maul did some manipulating himself of convincing Dooku to join him, which is so ironic because he makes the argument, oh, Maul, Sidious is just using you. He'll toss you aside when he's done with you. The ironic thing is that that's pretty much what happens in Revenge of the Sith, where Palpatine tosses Dooku aside in favor of Anakin. And we also get the really interesting revelation that Maul is Talzin's son, which I'm pretty sure... I was listening to a podcast from Star Wars Underworld, and they were speculating about that, because apparently there's a novel called Darth Plagueis, and in that they reveal that Mother Talzin is Maul's son, and that basically Talzin's revelation, from what I understand, is ripped straight from that novel. So nice nod from Filoni's part to the EU. I'm curious to see what else other nods to EU he would have had planned prior to the show being cancelled. Because there's a ton of love to the expanded universe in this show. And I also like seeing Dooku and Maul temporarily team up. Like, even though we know Dooku's eventually going to go back to cities, I'm curious why, though. Is Dooku going to go back to Sidious by force? Like, is he? does he legit agree with Maul and he's actually siding with him? Or does or is he just playing Maul? Is he just benefit playing with Maul simply because playing along because he knows it benefits him at this time and he's just going to betray him the instant Sidious shows up? And so we'll have to wait and see. That's going to be interesting. That's, I find that really interesting. And then Grievous got some cool action, and he escaped Cossack Grievous style. And Master Tipley died, which was, I mean, on one end it was kind of shocking, but on the other end it's not. I mean, Clone Wars kills off characters all the time. And, yeah, this is another major character, well, sort of major character death, but it's still a big character death that the show did not get to do. And I had a feeling she would die again. One, as I said before, Clone Wars kills people off all the time. Also, why would you have this character in this arc again? Like, continuity, nods, like, I thought, oh, it's cool to see her again. But then, when we got to that fight, I'm like, she's gonna die. I mean, why else would you bring her back? Also, there's, like, this is way too big a fight for everyone to walk away scot-free. So, obviously, someone has to get out of here, is not walking out of here. And seeing as how I know Mace Windu, um, Obi-Wan, and... Ayla Sakula, who I don't think we've seen in a while. It's cool to see her again. But we know they're alive. They're in Revenge of the Sith, so pretty obvious that Tipley was going to die in a really nice death. And one interesting revelation that came out of this, which I just remembered just now. They, the Jedi now believe that Dooku is the mastermind. He's the Sith Lord, but the Ma Maul's master. Which is weird because in Revenge of the Sith, they say Palpatine's the Sith Lord we've been searching for. So, which is weird because that line would imply that they suspect there's someone above Dooku. So I'm wondering 
what led them to that conclusion? Was it... Does Dooku reveal, I'm not the master? Is it... Does Obi do they recall... It actually makes no sense, because I'm pretty sure Dooku mentions he had a master in Attack of the Clones. Um, the only explanation I can come is, one, there's an episode they haven't shown us, either in the Mall arc or a future arc that would have hinted at Lord Sidious. And then my other theory is that the Yoda arc was supposed to be shown at, after the Maul arc. Again, I have no way of confirming this, except if Duke... The, the only real way I can confirm it is if Dooku's in his alt... And the outfit Dooku wore in the final episode of the Clone Wars, if he's wearing that throughout the Maul arc, then this takes place after the Yoda arc, but if not... Again, I have no way of knowing, but I'm pretty... But it would make sense if the Yoda arc took place after this, because then... Yoda meets the Lord of the Sith, and then he knows, oh wait, there's someone above Dooku. So, that's the only explanation, but we'll have to wait and see. So yeah. Also, really nice shot in the final panel. That was a really cool shot of Darth Sidious. Um, which basically, if anyone hasn't seen Revenge of the Sith, they, that pretty much confirms that Palpatine and Lord Sidious are the same person. I'm curious to know if that shot was ripped from the the show. Like, if that was the exact same final shot. Because either way, it's a really cool shot. I'm really curious to see how what it would have looked like in the show. Just, ugh! So bummed the show is canceled. We didn't get to see this. So I'm really curious to see how this all ends. Again, the biggest downside to this arc is that Especially in regards to the action with the lightsaber fights we had between Dooku the, and the Maul fighting the Jedi, like, I would have loved to have seen this in Clone Wars animation. And, and again, or you have, like, these epic space battles, the space station built into the astro inside the asteroid. It's like, these are great visuals. And the fact that we're not getting to see this the way it was intended, just, I'm kind of bummed. But, on the upside, I'm glad that the story itself is really good. I mean, the fact that just the script itself is good and that it doesn't need to rely on the action to make this a great arc is good. Like, I'm giving these arc episodes 8, 8.5s right now. Like, I feel like this would be, like, I'd be giving, like, 9s across the board if the if this was, this, if this was shown the way it was intended to because... The visuals probably would have been icing on an amazing cake. So yeah. Also, thankfully the comic was nice enough to acknowledge the original writer. Her name is Adia Mashak Kroal. I have no clue if you're pronouncing that right. Major kudos to her for writing this great script. And this is her first time writing for the cloner. She's written some stuff before, but never for this show. No, oh, no, wait. Her name is I. Aida Mashak Corral. But yeah. So first time writing for the show. Really good first job. I'm curious if she wrote anything else for the show. So yeah, hopefully the final issue ends this in an awesome way. I feel like we're going to get the end of Talzin. Or Maul. One of them. But either way, I can't wait to see it. I'm a little worried. Because we're, we're going to have Maul face off against Sidious again. I'm worried this is going to feel a little too similar to the fight in Season 5. But we'll have to wait and see. So yeah. I'm glad the comics gave her credit, and also kudos to the comics for making everything flow nicely. Someone pointed out that they had to cut like certain panels to make everything flow nicely. It's barely noticeable. Like I feel like the only thing that's kind of suffering is the action, but I can more or less tell what's happening. And there are very few points when I feel like we're cutting a panel. Like, I can guess that, okay, like, Grievous taking down, escaping, I'm sure that was more than one, pa two panels, I'm sure it was a couple, a minute or so of him fighting, but even so, it looks really cool, so yeah, great issue, I'm, I'm also really bummed that Dark Horse is not making Star Wars comics anymore, because I would have loved to have seen the rest of the show done, done in comic book form, but we'll have to wait and see if Marvel chooses to pick it up. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Mall comic. Leave your thoughts below. Don't spoil the final issue for, issue for me if you've read it. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to reading it. So, till then, J Starts You 60. May the Force be with you.